Mr. Magoo. If you read that and felt a shiver down your spine, then you're probably one of the few to escape the past that you've either forgotten or completely suppressed. Most will read it and think of that old cartoon about some old wealthy rich man, but that isn't what I'm talking about. Just typing this is making my skin crawl, this is honestly the first time I've ever had to write this. But to explain thoroughly, I'll have to go back to a warm summer in 1993. Summer break had just started in my old town known as Scottsdale. Where I lived, our neighbours were practically family. I had three best friends. John was the leader of our group. He always had a plan on how we could earn some cash so we could play at the local arcade. Sam, well, she was a voice of reason in our group. She would always give her thoughts on John's plans and why they wouldn't work or what we can improve. Matt was the youngest, but he always knew how to make people laugh or to cheer them up. I always felt closer to him, mostly because he was always at our house. His home life wasn't the best. I remember when he showed me his bruises his father had given him. His father was a drunk who always told Matt that he was the reason they had money issues, which wasn't true. If beer bottles could be a currency, his father would be filthy rich. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trailing off. I just really hated the guy. We'd just gotten home from school. Matt and I tossed our backpacks aside and booted up the Super Nintendo. We were eager to play Super Mario Kart, so Matt could finally beat me. Just as we started to play, I heard a knock at the door. Pushing pause, I hurried to the door and was met with John. His head was covered in sweat, but also super excited. Dude, a kid in my class told me that something big is happening at the old Chessers place, man! The old Chessers place was an old, run-down, two-story house. The people who had lived there was an old married couple that both died in their sleep. Rumours went around saying that they made a suicide pact. The house had been vacant for years and on the market for rent. Had someone finally moved in there? What happened? I asked. These are posted everywhere! How do you not see it? John said as he flew his backpack off and dug out a piece of paper which he shoved in my face. The paper was entirely green and it read, The most amazing magic show you'll ever see, one night only. Tickets not required to see the amazing Mr. Magoo. Show begins at 4pm tonight at the old house on Willem Street. A magic show. Dude, only little kids like that stuff. I said. John sighed and pointed to the bottom of the paper. No, dipshit. Look here. Special offer. Anyone who attends will be paid just to watch or choose any other reward. Tonight only. Now, I know what you're thinking. I, I should have known that something was off. But as a kid, when you hear you can earn some cash without doing chores, you'd be stupid not to go. Alright, I'll meet you there. I said, feeling that rush of excitement. John smiled and handed me the papers he let from my porch. Remember, it's at four tonight. Don't be late, he said as he sped away on his red bicycle. I quickly put the paper in my pocket and let Matt know what was going on. His reaction matched mine. A magic show? Man, that sounds kind of lame. I knocked on his head as if he was a door. Hello, anyone in there? We get paid to watch. Maybe we could save up money for the new games coming out. Suddenly, his eyes lit up. You're right. Your mom has said money has been tight lately. We could also help her out. He jumped up quickly and started to put his shoes back on. That's when we heard another knock at the door, which I knew who it would be when I answered. As I opened the door, there stood Sam. Her blonde hair swayed a bit in the summer's wind as her blue eyes lit up. I suppose John already told you, she said with a hand on her hip. I have to admit, I had a huge crush on her, but so did John. We had a slight rivalry on who could win her heart. After trying to find my words, Matt came up behind me. He sure did. They're also paying us to watch. Sam crossed her arms. Don't you guys find it weird? As I said, Sam was always the one to question everything. She was right in doing so, but were we going to listen? Absolutely not. Look, I think we should go. If we see any weird stuff, we'll just split. She sighed and told us to hurry up if we were going to do this. Me and Matt hurried to the kitchen and threw some snacks into his backpack. We exited the house and jumped on our bicycles and pedaled off. Our small neighbourhood was like any other. People gardening, jogging, and small kids playing in their kiddie pools. Quickly, we arrived at Willem Street, that the old Chester's place resided. As we rode up to the house, there were already dozens of kids sitting in front of the main gate. Of course, I recognised all of them. Even the school bully was there, Stanley Tatum. John noticed us and gave us a wave. Sam! I, I didn't think you were going to show! Sam rolls her eyes. Someone's got to watch over you guys. Instantly, that reminded me of my parents. You guys don't think this will take hours, do you? 
both my parents get home around 8. John waved my worry away. Nah, man. Probably an hour top. Plus, you know, our town gets a lot of traveling acts. Which was true, since we pretty much lived in the suburbs, we had a lot of visitors trying to gather a crowd. Two years ago with a random parade. Another was a magic show that our parents took us to, which was super underwhelming, but this time we were getting paid just to watch. Plus, with the flyers around, they know where we'd be. Matt added, to which we all agreed with. Suddenly a random trumpet played, making all the kids grow quiet and turn towards where it was coming from. There before us was a man. He smiled as he faced all of the children. He wore all black with a top hat on his head. His moustache was white and long but twirled at the tips. He took the top hat off his head and bowed. Hello all. I am the amazing Mr. Magoo. I want to thank all of you for coming. Tonight I will amaze all of you and you will earn your hard-earned cash at the end. Now please, follow me inside. Quickly, he began to play trumpet once more, and the gate slowly opened without anyone touching it. We all laughed and followed him into the backyard of the old Chester's place. Or, I should say, Mr. Magoo's now. The backyard's grass was still overgrown, and the old shed still padlocked. Nothing had changed, honestly, but quickly we spotted a makeshift tent. From the looks of it, it was small and looked beat up, with other sewn cloths attached to it. We all stopped at the sight of it. Mr. Magoo turned around. Now, don't let the outside fool you. If you wish to see the magic, you'll have to go through. He smiled at all of us and bowed once more as he slipped inside. One by one, we all went into the entrance. As we entered, my eyes lit in surprise at how big it was inside. Each side of the tent had a lit fire, with bleachers on each side, and in the middle was a pool filled with water. Above it was a line that attached from one side of the tent to the other. It looked like a real circus you'd see on TV. Suddenly, Mr. Magoo's voice surrounded us. It sounded like he was speaking into an intercom or maybe a microphone. Quickly, find a seat and you'll be in for a treat. Quickly, everyone rushed to find seats. Our gang found perfect spots at the top of the middle section bleachers. Quickly, we all sat and waited. The lights inside began to dim until the room was dark. Then a spotlight landed on Mr. Magoo, who stood on top of the wire right above the pool. I tried to look around where the spotlight was coming from, but I couldn't find anything. It was like real magic. Welcome, welcome. Now children, what you're about to see is a secret you'll always need to keep. Now enough chit chat. Let's go for a leap. Mr. Magoo placed one foot forward and jumped. We all screamed as he fell into the pool with a giant splash. All the lights in the tent went dark once again. That's when we heard a flute begin to play. Its sound was unlike any other. So sweet and warming. The spotlight aimed at the pool. We watched in amazement and wonder as Mr. Magoo played the flute as he levitated up exiting the pool. His clothes weren't wet, but they had turned white instead. The lights in the room lit back up, but instead they were blue. Suddenly, fish of all colours and sizes began to swim around. Not lights that were shaped like fish, but real life fish. They swam past all of us. I reached out to touch it and felt its smooth body. Everyone was laughing and clapping while trying to touch the fish. A giant whale entered the tent from the entrance and swam all around. Mr. Magoo never stopped playing his flute as the creatures of the sea swam in every direction. A school of fish swam past us and began to twirl all around him, faster and faster until they all shot off in different directions. He set his flute aside and quickly bowed to all of us. He took his top hat off and blew into it. Instantly the lights inside the tent went dark again. We all began to clap and cheer, some kids were crying from how beautiful it was, which I'll admit I came close. It was like we witnessed something that human minds don't think is possible. It was overwhelming for all of us. The lights lit the room and there stood Mr. Magoo. He was dressed back in his black suit. He smiled at us. We should take a small break. Does anyone have any questions if anyone would like to partake? All the kids raised their hand. Mr. Magoo smiled. Yes, you there. What's your question? The girl stood from her seat. Uh, um, how, how did you do that? He laughed. Anything is possible, my dear. Face your fear and you'll see everything so clear. More hands rose and one by one he answered them. The questions weren't really important. It seemed like they weren't asking the most important one. Then finally, Matt was picked. Who are you, really? Mr. Magoo smiled. I am who I am, little Matt. A magician who wants to show the world that anything is possible. 
Back then, it didn't bother me that he knew Matt's name, which meant he must have known all of our names. He eyeballed us with a smile. And what about you? He said as he pointed at me. I didn't have my hand raised or any of the other times, so why me? Where are you from? I asked. His smile widened as he raised his flute to his mouth. He began to levitate as he played a different tune from before. He landed back on top of the wire as he played. Softly, the lights began to flicker and his voice surrounded us. I am from everywhere. I am not at one place at a time. Quickly, our surroundings changed. We were no longer in a tent, but in a rainforest. Everyone looked around as birds flew past us. Kids were pointing out all of the frogs and animals of all kinds. I can be anywhere I wish. I am not stuck at any place. I have shown people what lays beyond their walls. The flute playing became more intense as our scenery changed once more, this time in the savannah. Tall grass surrounded us with lions in the distance and a family of zebra. Everyone was enamoured and cheering. I can even free the ones who feel stuck in their reality. The flute changed its tune and we were transported into space. The stars surrounded us with cosmoses and galaxies in every direction. We zoomed through stars and arrived in front of Earth. I can take anyone where they desire and give them what they most admire. We flew down into Earth, passing cities all around the world that people had dreamed of visiting. New York, Los Angeles, Tokyo. So many cities at once. Finally, the room went dark, and there he stood in the middle where the pool once was. He played his flute softly, and slowly he came to a stop and bowed down to us. Everyone in the crowd cheered, including my friends. Sam's face was filled with so many emotions, along with John who couldn't stop cheering. Once my eyes landed on Matt, I noticed he was crying as he kept clapping. I'm afraid this is the end of the show. I hope you all never forget as you grow. Your money is under your seats. Thank you all so much. He said with a smile. Sure enough, when we all looked, the money was there. A whole hundred dollar bill. We all began to leave the tent, I met my friends outside. John and Sam couldn't stop talking about what we all witnessed. I couldn't blame them, this was something that only movies or shows of pure fiction had in them. As we exited the tent, the sun was still up. It felt like hours had passed. But as I checked my watch, only five minutes had gone by. Holy shit! Hey guys, it's only been five- Quickly as I glanced up to tell my friends, I noticed Matt wasn't with us. Hey guys, did you see where Matt went? I asked as I looked at every kid around me trying to spot him. He was- Right behind us when we left, John said. Sam nodded to agree with him. I made my way back into the tent. Kids were still exiting. I started to push some of them out of the way. Finally, I reached the entrance and stepped back inside. The lights were still lit and in the middle of the tent was Mr. Magoo and Matt, along with the school bully, Stanley. They were talking about something, but all I could hear was a light mumble. I stepped closer. He bent down on one knee and held both their hands. You both wish to come with me? I travel all over. You'll see so much. That made my heart race. I couldn't let this happen. Uh, hey Matt, we n we need to leave. Uh, Mum will be home soon, I said trying to lie. Matt looked at me while Stanley smiled as he looked up at Mr. Magoo, still holding his hand. But I, I don't want to be here anymore. My dad, he will just keep hurting me. Matt, you can't just get up and leave. You, you still have a family here. I'm your family, aren't I? I said as I placed my hand on my chest. Matt smiled at me lightly. He knew I was right. Since the beginning of our friendship, I had always told him never to run away from his problems. As Matt began to walk towards me, Mr. Magoo grabbed his arm. Now, Matt, you want to come with me? I can show you so much. He said. No, I... I changed my mind. Matt said as he tried to pull away. Mr. Magoo tugged him harder. You are mine, Matt. Matt tried to release himself. Stop! You're... you're hurting me! I started to run towards them. Let go, you freak! Mr. Magoo looked at me and a smile broke across his face. Matt screamed my name as the lights flickered in the tent. In those flickers, the tent walls turned into flesh and meat. Shackles hanged down from the ceiling. They were holding human parts and heads of children and adults. My stomach turned at the thought. Was that what we were touching when we saw the animals? My eyes found Mr. Magoo. His skin began to crack all over and he grabbed his face and tore it off. Underneath was some creature of darkness. His eyes were red and his smile, well, 
It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Just as I was about to reach Matt, the creature sunk into the meaty ground, holding both Matt and Stanley. I grabbed at Matt's hand as he cried for help. I tried to pull him out of the ground. In his tearing, snot-ridden face, he looked at me in the eyes. Please! I- I'm so scared! He said before his hand flew out of mine, disappearing into the ground. The tent turned back to normal as I screamed trying to dig into the dirt to reach Matt. I dug as tears fell down my face. I finally stopped once I knew it was useless. Laughter erupted all around me. Then Mr. Magoo's voice surrounded me. You made your choice, and you'll always live with that. I took the money out of my pocket and threw it to the ground. Give me my friend back! I screamed so loud my throat strained. The room remained silent and all at once the ground disappeared and I began to fall into the black nothingness. I tried to scream but my voice wouldn't come. I fell for what felt like hours. Slowly I closed my eyes. Then suddenly I fell onto the ground knocking the air out my lungs. I coughed hard as I realised I was laying outside the small tent entrance. I looked all around, it was, uh, it was night time. What time was it? I looked at my watch, which read 10.34. Matt! I yelled as I launched back up to my feet and entered inside the tent. But the inside was small, like maybe three people could fit in here? I grabbed my head as I started to have a panic attack. What the fuck was happening? Where was Matt? Someone had to know what was happening. I ran out of the tent and exited the gate. My bike and friends were nowhere to be found. I ran all the way home, but when I arrived, there were cops parked in my driveway. My parents noticed me and came running as they both hugged me. My mother had began crying and so had my father. They both explained that I'd been missing for 24 hours, that they had called the cops and searched the neighborhood for me. Also, that Matt's father had called asking if Matt was with us, because he didn't go home either. I tried to find my words. Didn't they see the flyers about the magic show? Why didn't they check there? I tried to explain everything, but they looked at me like I was crazy. Then I remembered I had the green paper. I took it out of my pocket and unfolded it. The words were still on it, nothing had changed. I showed them and explained everything. My mother examined the paper. Uh, honey, there's nothing on this paper. I looked at the paper and... I could see the words. I reread it in front of all of them. They couldn't see it. They didn't believe me. I tried over and over again to explain what happened, but they wouldn't listen. The cops soon left and my parents kept asking me what happened. I called all my friends and they had no idea what I was talking about. I felt like I was losing my fucking mind. I went through the whole story with them, but none of them remembered. Even when I returned to school, no one knew what I was talking about. The cops eventually searched the old Chester's place, but they informed us that there was no tent, that the place was still locked up. Days passed with no information on Matt, then months, then eventually years. Matt's father gave up drinking in hopes that maybe he would come back home. The cops tried to link any foul play to me, but there wasn't any proof anywhere. Eventually, the story on Matt's disappearance became a local mystery of the town. John and Sam married later down the road and left this town. But I never did. I stayed. I became obsessed with Matt's disappearance. I worked to buy my parents' house from them and kept a stable job. But I spent my nights looking for any information I can get on Mr. Magoo. Any stories or videotapes that kids may have used. But I couldn't find a thing. I had so many questions on why this happened. Why didn't he take all of us? What was he? I wrote down everything he said, all the sentences he spoke. They were embedded in my mind which sparked theories that I had written down. That he was something from another plane of existence. That he possibly comes here to take children, maybe adults. But for what? So many theories and so many questions. After years of no results, I decided to post this story in hopes that someone remembers. If anyone knows anything, please contact me. I won't stop. Not until I can find Matt.